Hey guys, welcome back to Grit and Grace Farm. My name is Angel. If you're new, welcome. Not welcome back. Um, so I am just jumping on here kind of quick to give you a little bit of a wordy update on some things that have been going on around the homestead this last week. Uh, I haven't filmed a lot of it because I've had to just focus and handle it. Um, but first and foremost, so we had pig pen castrated on about a week and a half ago. And on the one week point, uh, I noticed that he was having swelling. I had been watching him for signs of infection, like, um, sorry, Tozer's being crazy right now. Um, like eating changes, um, bowel movement changes, uh, lethargy, the being lethargic, however you pronounce that word. Um, anyways, I had been watching him for any behavioral shifts and dietary shifts, and I hadn't seen anything. He seemed to be perfectly fine. Um, and then on Saturday, at the one week point, I noticed that he was swollen. And so I called up Robin, text Robin, and I said, um, could this be a sign of infection? He's not having any other signs that I'm aware of, um, what would you do? And she's like, well, let me come take a look. So she came over and she helped me take a look at him. And she was, uh, she helped me drain the, so it was swollen and it wasn't full, the incision wasn't fully closed. So she helped me to drain it. She drained it and I helped. Um, and found that it didn't seem to be infected. It seemed to be, our best guess was like a hematoma where it was just blood trapped um, and it wasn't draining properly or whatever, but it didn't have any telltale signs of infection. So we agreed to monitor and um, she advised just draining it, irrigating it, and putting ointment on it. And, you know, antibacterial, anti-infection kind of ointment. So I reached out to a couple of other homesteaders and got kind of their uh, thoughts on it and they all basically concurred the same thing that that's what it seemed like and that that would be what they would do And so that felt really good to know um, and So they also recommended a couple other a couple of like medicines that they would use um, And so I ended up going I used what we had on hand what Robin gave me uh, and then I also went and grabbed a couple of those recommended um, like ointments and sprays and stuff like that. I figured even if I don't use it, it would be really good to have those things on hand. Um, Toaster's upset. Um, so I went and grabbed those and I ended up using one of those and by yesterday, today is Wednesday, uh, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I was going out morning and evening, draining, irrigating, and applying medicine. And by last night, almost all of the swelling was gone. Nothing was coming out. It looked it, the incision had properly closed and um, everything looked great. Again, during that entire time, his behavior had not changed. He was not acting any differently. He was eating just fine. Like, clearly it wasn't an, an infection because in a week and a half, if the, a small animal like that gets an infection, you're gonna know. And so this morning, I just went out and checked on him when I fed him and I didn't put ointment on because last night it was basically closed up so I was like yeah I'm gonna leave him alone because he does not like being picked up um, poor guy and so praise God he seems to be doing just fine now um, and I, I did uh, make it a point to clean out their wallow more frequently. I was cleaning out three times a day because him going and laying in the water with that ointment on him, um, they sometimes drink out of that water too. And while normal like dirt and stuff isn't a big deal for them to drink out of um, that medicine being in there, I didn't want them consuming too much of it. I'm sure it would be okay to a certain extent. Um, but I was just being diligent to rinse out their container and refill it. Um, so Thankfully, he seems to be just fine. Now, in the midst of all of that, um, I have been dealing with this one. Um, he's got food aggression issues, which we've known 
he's about, he just turned two, and um, he's almost two and a half now. Not quite. Anyways, um, he's got some food aggression issues. It's really manageable. We, you know, with a dog with food aggression issues, you work with them, but there's a lot of just maintaining. Uh, there's a lot of avoiding that trigger and just, you know, setting him up for success with the way that you handle him. Well, in the last couple of weeks, um, that had gotten a bit lax and he ended up getting nippy. We went to PetSmart and I was talking to a trainer there and she was like, you guys just moved and you've got a new puppy and, you know, it, it takes a, a, a trained dog like three to six months to adjust after a big move like this. And then you add in a puppy and his whole world's just turned upside down. Come on, Jack. Come. So um, she was like, it's no surprise that that, you know, you thought you guys had that kind of under control and now he's having issues with it again. Just set up safeguards, you know, do everything, literally everything that we were doing. She was like, that's exactly the right way to do that. Um, just reinforce his training, basically kind of start fresh with him and reinforce his training and um, give him time, you know, and set him up to where um, he's not in a situation that you know could be a trigger and reinforce his training. So that was really good to hear that we were on the right track with how to handle that. Um, and then the reason we were at PetSmart is because little doggy man will not stop barking. And we have trained him and we have worked with him and he is super smart. And he has picked up on a lot of the other training very quickly. But the barking is just excessive. Um, really, really bad. And so I went looking to find what we could do to help, with, help him with barking. Um, so that's why we were there. So yeah, so we had to deal with pig pen and then Jack having issues and Tozer having issues um all in the middle of that was just it was just stressful um but we're kind of on the back end a little bit of some of those things um like I said pig pen is doing fine now and we're on the path toward um getting Jack reestablished and I found a little something that might help a little bit with the barking. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. Um, so, all of those things. And a cool update, too. Um, the back area where the pigs are currently, we're going to turn that into our a container garden area as soon as we can. Um, when Matt gets home from work, hopefully on Friday, um, we are going to, well, on Saturday, not on, not on Friday when he gets home from work, but on Saturday, um, we plan to get the pigs established with that um, electric fence that we got. We got Premier One electric hog fence. Um, and we're gonna get them set up I don't know where we're gonna put them just yet. We're still talking about that. If we're gonna put them in a part of the backyard or if we're gonna put them out in part of the pasture or what. But um, we're gonna get them put there, wherever there is. And um, then that area that they were in, we're going to either clean out or we're going to mulch over. And then we're gonna put containers back there and start our garden. We were going to start it out here in the front, <coughs> we do still plan to have a cottage garden there eventually, but we were pricing out everything. And unless we can get some serious secondhand materials, which we don't have a lot of connection for right now, um, in the short term, we don't have the money to fence that and build beds and everything. But what we do have is a whole bunch of plastic containers from when we moved. We're gonna drill holes in those. We've grown in those before. Drill holes in those, fill them up with soil, put them out in that back area and start growing because that's what we really need to do. It's a high priority for us. So, um, that is my update. I know it's not a whole lot. Um, feels like a whole lot when you live through it. But um, 
yeah, I hope to be back soon with some actual footage of us doing things. But like when I was out there flipping that little piggy over and trying to wearing gloves, put ointment on them and stuff, I was like, that's not the time try to, to try to record and everything like that. So like, we'll just tell them about that. <laughs> um, so thanks for joining me at Grit and Grace Farm. See you next time.